Still thinking Prot Paladin is truly the undisputed king of Mythic Plus tanking? Well, think again. After working closely alongside some of the best MDI tank players in the world, including those from none other than Europe's top two leading PvE organizations, Echo and Method, it turns out things might not be quite as they seem. Say goodbye to the days of relying on a single man's opinion as the de facto tier list on any given patch. It's time to embrace a new era of diverse perspectives and expert insights. But first, a little about us. For over a decade, Skillcapped has partnered with the world's elite players, including world champions and gaming legends who have set the standard for excellence, all with the end goal of producing educational content and resources focused on improving your skills and performance. Through doing this, we've assisted over half a million players just like you achieve their PvP goals. But now, we're expanding our horizons to include PvE, where we're committed to providing you that same level of guidance and support you trust. But enough of that, let's jump back into the video. So, in order to rank our six tanks, we will be doing so by taking each one and assigning a score out of 10 across three distinct metrics. First up is survivability, assessing each tank's durability across dungeons. Considering their healing needs, ability to survive during and outside cooldowns, and their handling of various damage types including magical, physical, and even bleed effects. The second metric we consider is utility. This includes crowd control, interrupts, and just general mob control. Additionally, we'll be including party-wide utility, any beneficial buffs, cooldowns, off-healing capabilities, battle reses, dispels, and any other factors that enhance the spec's overall usefulness in dungeons. Lastly, the third metric will focus on damage, which plays a significant role in the performance of a tank, particularly in higher-end keys. For this, we will assign points based on their proficiency in both AoE damage and single-target priority damage. Let's start off with the highest ranked of our tanks, Vengeance Demon Hunter. Vengeance Demon Hunters exhibit some of the highest passive durability, primarily attributed to their exceptionally powerful four-piece tier set this season. This, combined with the Burning Alive and Charred Flesh talents, allows for the spread of Fiery Brand to multiple targets within a pack. This mechanic acts as the core focus of Vengeance Demon Hunters this season, contributing not only to their survivability, but also their damage output. Although Vengeance Demon Hunters may not possess as many cooldown options as some of the other tanks, they compensate for this with the potency of their available cooldowns, such as Metamorphosis and Fell Devastation. These abilities not only grant them a substantial increase in health, but also provide additional armor, enabling them to endure even the most challenging of pulls while active. In addition to relying on their cooldowns, Vengeance Demon Hunters rely on Demon Spikes for passive mitigation. They also utilize self-healing through the soul fragments generated primarily by Fracture, alongside their passive Leech. This combination greatly reduces the need for any direct healing. And of course, having access to a last stand effect like Last Resort is always highly beneficial for any tank. A notable weakness of Vengeance Demon Hunters, however, lies in their dependence on ramping up to attain a substantial portion of their survivability. This reliance is primarily attributed to the mechanics of Fiery Brand and the Painbringer talent. As a consequence, maneuvering and effectively pulling outside of cooldowns can occasionally pose a challenge. However, when considering their overall survivability, Vengeance Demon Hunters are well equipped to handle both magic and physical damage thanks to their passive magic damage mitigation through demonic wards. Nevertheless, they may encounter challenges when dealing with bleed damage and pulling outside of cooldowns. So based on these factors, overall for survivability, we'll be awarding them a score of 8 out of 10. When it comes to utility, Vengeance Demon Hunters excel in mob control. Abilities such as Sigil of Silence and Chaos Nova offer excellent options for effectively dealing with packs that require multiple stops. Having access to Imprison is also very valuable, as not only does this allow them to stop crucial mechanics going through, but also enables you to skip packs, like the mobs just before the last boss, Decatriarch Rathai in Brackenhide Hollow, for example. Right now, though, one of the main highlights of a Vengeance Demon Hunter's utility kit has to be Chaos Brand. This ability provides one of the most sought after buffs due to the majority of meta damage dealers all dealing magic damage. Outside of that, Vengeance does however lack as much party utility as some of the other top tier tanks at the moment, with the only real way to support your team being through darkness. Despite this limitation, their exceptional AoE mob control and highly sought after damage increase from Chaos Brand are more than enough to make up for it in the current meta, giving them a total score of 8 out of 10. The damage output of Vengeance Demon Hunters is their main strength, and they are often regarded as one of the top performers among meta tanks in this metric. In terms of AoE damage, the continuous damage provided by multiple fiery brands in combination with the burst damage of Spirit Bomb is unparalleled. Furthermore, even in single target scenarios, Vengeance Demon Hunters are rivaled by only a few other select tanks, with Protection Warriors being the closest contenders. 
Considering their exceptional damage potential in both AoE and single target situations, it is only justified to award Vengeance Demon Hunters a perfect score of 10 for damage. With a total score of 26 out of 30, Vengeance Demon Hunters demonstrate impressive overall performance across survivability, utility, with an emphasis on damage. It's important to note that while they are relatively easy to pick up, mastering the nuances and intricacies of playing a Vengeance Demon Hunter can be quite challenging. The class requires a deep understanding of both its own mechanics as well as advanced knowledge of the dungeons in order to fully unleash its potential. Guardian Druids are a second highest performing tank, experiencing a significant resurgence in Season 2, and their potential is expected to grow even further with the release of Patch 10.1.5. Guardian Druids possess exceptional survivability and excel primarily when coming up against strictly physical damage. The 4 set tier bonus contributes massively to this as it provides them a substantial increase in maximum health, bolstering their survivability and providing a solid buffer against any level of incoming damage. In addition to the 4 set tier bonus, Guardian Druids also benefit massively from the 2 set bonus as well, which in combination along with the use of Frenzied Regeneration grants them impressive self-healing capabilities, making them very self-sufficient. Rotationally in terms of survivability, druids rely heavily on stacking iron fur and maintaining moonfire for that inherent durability. Then to further bolster their survivability, guardian druids have access to a wide range of defensive cooldowns, including short reliable cooldowns like bark skin and longer and more potent cooldowns like rage of the sleeper, survival instincts, and most importantly incarnation. One thing to note though is that guardian druids have historically been perceived as weaker at mitigating magic damage compared to some other tank classes. This is definitely true, it is worth noting that in the current season, the dungeon pool no longer presents any insurmountable encounters for guardian druids. For this reason, we'll be scoring them a 9 out of 10 for survivability. Guardian Druid is definitely not lacking in the utility department either, and alongside, like we mentioned, gaining traction due to the dungeon pool lacking heavy incoming magic damage, the other reason is the increase we've seen in party damage across the board, which has only highlighted the importance of tank support and utility even more this season. Guardian Druids excel in this aspect, particularly due to the talent after the wildfire. This talent provides a significant boost to healing for any party, enabling Guardian Druids to assist healers on challenging healing checks. In addition to After the Wildfire, Druid boasts other strong party utility to support the healer, such as Innervate and Nature's Vigil, and even a Battle Res, all of which are valued very highly. Not to mention having a group buff like Mark of the Wild and speed increase from Stampeding Roar is never a bad thing. In terms of mob control, the highlight of Druid is both Incapacitating Roar and Typhoon, which are crucial for interrupting large packs of mobs. However, it is worth mentioning that Guardian Druids lack any real hard crowd control abilities. Overall, we'll be scoring them 9 for utility. When it comes to damage output, it is true that Guardian Druids may fall slightly behind some other tank classes. The primary reason for this is their heavy reliance on cooldowns, particularly Incarnation. As when during cooldowns, especially in AoE situations, Guardian Druids can compete with the best. However, once these cooldowns expire, their damage output significantly decreases. To remain competitive, Guardian Druids often need to adjust their pulls and playstyle to revolve around maximizing the effectiveness of Incarnation. The more mobs you can pull, the more damage you're capable of dealing. It should be noted, however, that due to this heavy reliance on Thrash, the overall damage of both small packs and especially bosses tends to be on the lower end of the scale compared to some other tank classes. Based on these factors, we'll be rewarding Guardian Druids a score of 7 out of 10 for damage. With a total score of 25 out of 30, Guardian Druids are known for their exceptional durability and defensive capabilities, making them one of, if not the most resilient tank. Their straightforward playstyle and emphasis on both personal and group survivability make them one of the most beginner-friendly options. While there are still some nuances and specialized skills to master, Guardian Druids provide a relatively accessible entry point into tanking and can be a great choice for those new to the role. Reliable, safe, and great for pugging, our next tank has been the most popular across all levels of dungeon for some time now and for very good reason. We're talking, of course, about Protection Paladin. When it comes to survivability, the Protection Paladin isn't what they once were, especially now after the nerf to Sentinel, with their primary means of defense being in the utilization of their extensive cooldown kit. Boasting a repertoire of powerful defensives such as Ardent Defender, Guardian of the Ancient Kings, Sentinel, Eye of Tear, and of course, Divine Shield, Protection Paladins have a diverse toolkit to rotate through in order to survive various levels of incoming damage. In addition to rotating cooldowns, they rely on the damage mitigation provided by both Shield of Righteousness and Consecration, coupled with their decent self-healing capabilities from Word of Glory. However, it should be noted that Protection Paladins possess relatively lower passive mitigation against physical damage compared to other tanks 
points in the meta. This can present challenges, particularly when facing sustained high levels of physical damage, causing you to have to compensate by overlapping defensive cooldowns. For the higher end of keys, this can end up causing issues and is one of the primary reasons we're seeing both Vengeance and Guardian Druids becoming a lot more popular. So for this reason, even despite their very strong cooldowns and great answers to both magic and bleed damage, we'll be giving Protection Paladins a 7 out of 10 for survivability. When you hear the word utility, the first spec that comes to mind will always be Protection Paladin, surpassing that of any other tank spec. One of the standout features that makes them highly desirable for pugging is their exceptional mob control capabilities. With abilities like Avenger's Shield and Divine Toll, they can effectively handle interrupts on their own. Additionally, they possess even more crowd control tools such as Hammer of Justice and Blinding Light, further enhancing their mob control. But the utility of Protection Paladins doesn't stop there. They excel in providing party support, with options like Blessing of Protection and Blessing of Spell Warding that can turn even the most dangerous boss mechanics into child's play. And that's not even scratching the surface. They bring Blessing of Sacrifice to the table, allowing them to mitigate incoming damage for their teammates. Blessing of Freedom for dispelling entangling roots and other debilitating effects. Protection Paladins are even well equipped to help out with party healing thanks to tools like Lay on Hands and Word of Glory, which can provide high spot healing when needed. Oh, and if you're too slow to save somebody, you can always just res them thanks to intercession. Last but not least, Protection Paladins also offer a valuable dispel for both diseases and poisons, making them particularly effective in dungeons like Neltharian's Lair, Bracken Hide, and Under Rot. All in all, Protection Paladins truly embody the concept of utility, providing an extensive range of abilities that greatly contribute to the success and smoothness of any dungeon. Thus, of course, we'll be scoring them 10 out of 10. However, one area where Protection Paladins face challenges is in terms of damage output. Compared to many other tank specs, they generally have much lower DPS, particularly in single target encounters. This can become a significant issue, especially in very high level tyrannical keys. On the bright side, their AoE damage potential is more notable. Abilities like Avenger's Shield and Blessed Hammer can dish out decent damage, especially when paired with wings. However, it's important to note that their overall damage output may not match up to some of the other tanking options available. We'll be scoring them a 6 out of 10 for damage. This gives Protection Paladins a total score of 23 out of 30, slightly lower than both Vengeance and Guardian. Despite this, Protection Paladins remain a highly popular and dominant tank spec. Their abundance of utility, extensive cooldowns, and well-rounded toolkit make them one of the best choices for tank players in almost all key levels, except perhaps at the absolute peak of keys, which is why they're slightly lower scoring than our two tanks. So if you're looking to main a tank and push keys this season, the carry potential of a Protection Paladin is unmatched. Their ability to support the party combined with their solid cooldowns and mob control provides them one of the best tanks for carrying keys. With the top three performing tanks discussed, let's now delve into the less meta tanks, all of which remain viable and possess their own unique strengths and weaknesses. Starting off with Brewmaster Monk, Brewmaster tanks possess a unique survivability mechanic called Stagger, which allows them to mitigate and delay a portion of incoming damage. This Stagger mechanic grants them a high effective health pool, making them resilient against heavy physical damage hits and quite forgiving in general. However, managing Stagger with Purifying Brew effectively is crucial, as it can lead to spiky health fluctuations and may require extensive kiting in certain situations. In terms of defensive cooldowns, Brewmasters have an extensive toolkit with abilities like Diffuse Magic, Dampen Harm, and and both Fortifying and Celestial Brews, which all provide additional layers of damage mitigation. However, the strength of these cooldowns can be a limiting factor, and when compared to some of the more meta tanks, are far weaker, making Brewmasters as a whole a lot less reliable in higher level keys. But while Brewmaster have decent self-healing capabilities, they are not entirely self-sustainable, and in certain pulls require focus healing if they want to survive. For this reason, we'll be rewarding them 7 out of 10 for survivability. Brewmaster Monks offer a more niche set of party utility with a focus on passive buffs. Mystic Touch, their equivalent of Vengeance Demon Hunter's Chaos brand, provides a physical damage increase. However, its value is considerably lower in the current meta where many specs deal magic damage. Close to Heart and Generous Poor are also factors to consider, offering passive boosts to both avoidance and healing which can help considerably. Aside from that, the only other real party utility Brewmaster offers is a dispel for both diseases and poisons, making them particularly effective in dungeons like Neltharian's Lair, Brackenhide, and Underrot. Where Brewmaster's shine utility-wise though is in terms of mob control. The AoE stun from Leg Sweep is highly regarded as one of the best crowd control abilities in Mythic Plus. Additionally, Ring of Peace is a versatile tool that allows you to skip packs when combined with paralysis, interrupt multiple mobs, create distance from dangerous enemies, and even reposition enemies out of affixes such as Sanguine. 
So while their party utility may be more limited compared to other tanks, Brewmaster Monks still provide valuable tools for crowd control and strategic maneuvering in certain dungeons, so we'll be rewarding them a respectable 7 out of 10. Damage has always been a strong point of Brewmaster, primarily down to the acquisition of borrowed power from certain trinkets and weapons, where their high versatility numbers result in some ridiculous damage numbers. This however, while still prevalent, was drastically toned down by nerfing Weapons of Order, which previously used to increase the damage of these effects. Even after the nerf as a whole, damage remains one of their strengths, being passively high regardless of how many mobs, especially in AoE situations. As for single target boss encounters, the damage is still decent in comparison to most tanks, but is getting heavily improved upon inside of 10.1.5, which will more than likely end up putting them at the top. But for now, in terms of damage, we'll be awarding Brewmasters a score of 8 out of 10. With a total score of 22, Brewmasters fall slightly below the top 3 meta tanks. While they remain competitive, there are some notable issues associated with their class design. One significant challenge is the problem of button bloat, where Brewmasters have an excessive number of abilities, all of which are on the global cooldown. This complexity can make the spec difficult to learn for beginners and players new to the class. Additionally, Brewmasters are considered to be one of the most gear-reliant tank specs. This can make them less popular among players, and those who do choose to play Brewmasters are often dedicated mains. However, However, if there is a shift in favor of more physical DPS to come in 10.1.5, Brewmasters could potentially see a drastic increase in their ranking. Now let's turn our attention to the Protection Warrior, a tank specialization that possesses a unique set of strengths and weaknesses. When it comes to survivability, the Protection Warrior stands out as one of the most resilient tanks currently available. The bulk of their durability stems from a strong emphasis on physical damage mitigation, primarily achieved through the use of the ability Shield Block. This makes them one of the strongest tanks at handling any level of incoming physical damage, especially now with the addition of the Season 2 tier set. With its focus on improving Last Stand, it synergizes amazingly with the Talent Bolster, and together, alongside heavy repercussions, provides a ton of uptime on Shield Block as a whole, making physical damage almost a non-factor. Outside of Shield Block and Last Stand, Protection Warriors possess a decent defensive toolkit, where their naturally high armor levels combined with Demoralizing Shout and Ignore Pain can help limit damage and take as a whole. As for big cooldowns, the main one is of course Shield Wall, which is perfect for handling high damage where Shield Block may otherwise not provide value. The main niche of Protection Warriors lies in their ability to counter spell casting, through valuable tools such as Spell Block and Spell Reflection that enable them to negate and even reflect incoming spells. However, one notable weakness is its limited passive magic mitigation when these are down, coupled with their lack of substantial self-healing capabilities. And unlike some other tanking specializations, Protection Warriors can end up requiring quite a lot of healing in order to survive, but for survivability, we'll be scoring them an 8 out of 10. One area where the warrior falls short and prevents them from taking a prominent position in the current meta is their limited utility toolkit. When compared with other tanks, the warrior lacks significant party utility options. Outside of Battle Shout, which holds less value in the caster-centric meta, the warrior's contribution to party utility is minimal. While Rallying Cry can offer some utility, it pales in comparison to the healing and overall utility provided by other tanking specializations. The only noteworthy party utility ability is Intervene, which can find niche uses in specific dungeons. For instance, in Freehold, it can prove useful for intervening Scrapper fixates or even pistol shots from Skycap and Crag. They do, however, gain some points back for mob control. As we know, AoE stuns are among the most sought after crowd controls in Mythic Plus, and Warrior brings Shockwave to the table, as well as having both Storm Bolt and Intimidating Shout, as well as a useful AoE slow provided by Thunderclap. However, when considering utility as a whole, it is difficult to justify awarding anything more than a 5 out of 10. Despite notable mob control abilities, their overall party utility compared to other tanks is limited. Where Warriors shines, though, is in terms of their damage output, both single target and AoE, having some of the strongest offensive cooldowns out of any of the tanks. Avatar combined with Unstoppable Force provides a huge damage increase to both Shockwave and Thunderclap, making them an immovable object from off the top of the damage meters. Then in addition, you've also got Ravager and Thunderous Roar, both of which provide great burst damage on AoE pulls. We can't mention damage without covering a warrior's unique niche, that being the impact of Spell Reflect in certain dungeons and against specific bosses. For example, in Neltharian's Lair, Protection Warriors can look to reflect such abilities as Sunder from Ularag Crag Shaper, and even Molten Crash from the final boss, Dargroll. Overall, the damage output of warriors, while naturally very high, can heavily vary depending on the dungeon and encounter, unlike Vengeance Demon Hunters. So because of this, we will assign them a score of 8 out of 10 for damage. 
After tallying up the scores, Protection Warrior achieves a total of 21 out of 30, making them one of the highest scoring tanks in terms of both survivability and damage. However, their lack of party utility limits their overall ranking and can make it more challenging for Protection Warriors to find groups, especially at the highest end of key levels. In these settings, tanks are often selected based primarily on the utility they bring to the party, which puts Protection Warriors at a slight disadvantage compared to tanks with stronger utility kits. It's fair to say though, Warrior is as a whole very underrated and overlooked by the community, but in certain dungeons, especially Nelth's Lair and Freehold, and arguably one of the strongest tanks. Now let's discuss the Blood Death Knight, which unfortunately gets the lowest score among the tanks. Since their dominant performance in the previous expansion, Blood Death Knights have struggled to maintain their former glory. When it comes to survivability, one of the main advantages of Blood Death Knights lies in their exceptional self-healing capabilities. Their ability to sustain themselves through high amounts of incoming damage using Death Strike makes them undoubtedly one of the most self-sufficient tanks overall. When played effectively, they can often go without requiring any external healing at all. This makes them arguably one of the strongest tanks in terms of survivability especially in lower level keys. However, their reliance on self-healing and the overall design of the spec can lead to unreliability in higher keys, particularly during fortified weeks when facing sustained melee damage, as they can just flop between death strikes or get one shot. In addition to their self-healing, Blood Death Knights has some powerful cooldowns such as Vampiric Blood, which is the centerpiece of their tier set. They also have access to Icebound Fortitude, Dancing Rune Weaponed, Lichborn, and Anti-Magic Shell, which will need to be rotated depending on the situation. Properly utilizing these cooldowns is crucial for bridging the gap in their self-healing potential when facing certain packs, and requires a lot of knowledge and skill, not only in terms of Blood DK itself, but also how the damage patterns in dungeons work. So in terms of survivability, Blood Death Knights excel in the lower levels of keys but become weaker and less reliable as you progress to higher levels. Considering this, we will score them 7 out of 10 for survivability. When it comes to utility, Blood Death Knights, even more so than Protection Warriors, offer limited party utility. As they primarily lack significant abilities that directly benefit their allies such as group buffs, damage increases, or party healing, this puts them at a huge disadvantage compared to pretty much all other tank classes that all bring something more to the group. The only utility Blood Death Knight has is Anti-Magic Zone, a useful ability for specific situations. And of course, their Battle Res, which is the only real highlight, but alone is not enough to make them a desirable choice solely for their utility. Utility. Luckily though, despite lacking in party utility, Blood Death Knight does bring some points back with their mob control, which is their main niche right now. Where the combination of two charges of death grip coupled with abomination limb makes certain bosses, and more importantly dungeon pulls a lot easier to execute, as well as both blinding sleet and abomination limb functioning as great ways to stop multiple casts going through. In merit of this, we'll be giving them a 5 out of 10 for utility as a whole. When it comes to damage, it is undeniable that Blood Death Knights have significant weaknesses in both their single target and AoE, being arguably the lowest overall damage tank right now. Their damage largely relies on abilities like Blood Plague, Blood Boil, and Death and Decay, which are mainly focused on AoE damage. However, even in AoE situations, their damage output remains lackluster without the additional support from abilities like Dancing Rune Weapon, Abomination Limb, and Empower Rune Weapon. Despite their overall low damage output, Blood Death Knights surprisingly have minimal aggro issues, thanks in large part to the threat modifiers on Blood Boil. Considering their relatively weak damage output, even after the recent 6% overall buff they received, we'll be rewarding them a 6 out of 10 for damage, being now equal to that of a Protection Paladin. In summary, Blood Death Knights receive our lowest total score of 18 out of 30. It's important to note, however, that they are still considered one of the top choices for low to mid-level keys. They excel at being highly self-sufficient tanks with minimal reliance on healing, while also providing strong mob control, grouping, and pulling capabilities. Nevertheless, Blood Death Knights undeniably struggle the most among all the tanks when it comes to key and overall damage scaling, which hinders their performance at higher levels of play. As a result, they are not as well represented at the top. And there you have it, a complete look at the Season 2 Mythic Plus tank meta. On screen now you'll see a quick recap of each tank's individual tier list placement. It's important to note that tier placements can vary depending on team composition, dungeon affixes, and individual player skill. Each tank brings unique strengths and playstyles to the table, and it's crucial to find the one that suits not only your playstyle, but also group dynamics. Be sure to drop a comment below and like the video if you enjoyed watching and would like to see more. As always though, we'd like to thank you all for watching, see you soon.